Hello everyone and welcome to the order. Today I'll be making a performance analysis of APU or iGPU based gaming systems. I get this question frequently, should I build an APU based gaming PC and is iGPU gaming worth it? The short answer is no and you will see why. So let's begin. So what is an iGPU based system? Well, it's basically a PC that uses an integrated graphics card instead of a discrete one. Currently, a lot of Intel and AMD processors come with an integrated graphics core inside of the CPU and a lot of people are wondering if those cores are powerful enough for gaming. Now, iGPU based gaming rigs have a few requirements. First, you need a top of the line CPU, high end APUs have the most powerful integrated graphics available and that is a must have in these gaming rigs. Lower end APUs simply don't have the required performance. Second, you will need fast memory like DDR3 2133, 2400 and so on. Integrated GPUs don't have their own memory, so they use some of the system's memory. So the faster the RAM, the better the performance. Slower RAM will bottleneck the APU. Third, you will need a slightly better motherboard. Now this step is optional, but recommended. If you get a better platform, you will have all of the available graphics ports and you will be able to achieve higher RAM frequencies by overclocking. APUs also have an interesting feature called Hybrid Crossfire. Basically, you can add a discrete GPU to your system and it will work in parallel with the integrated GPU. All of these requirements and features do have their setbacks and in this case they are quite significant. APUs have a bad price to performance ratio in terms of gaming because they try to deliver the best of both worlds, but unfortunately sometimes they end up having insufficient performance. Fast memory is more expensive and thus increases the overall price of the build. The more expensive motherboard also increases the end cost. Hybrid Crossfire works best only with low-end GPUs like the R7250 because faster cards would be bottlenecked by the integrated GPU. In the end, if we sum up the added expenses, we will realize that we are paying the same price as for a discrete GPU system with much better gaming performance. So we have cleared the basics, now let's proceed to the analysis. First I am going to make an example APU build using the AMD A107870K and for the same cost I am going to make a discrete GPU build and in the end I will compare which PC has the best price to performance ratio. You will notice that in this video I only use AMD CPUs. That's because they are the preferred choice when it comes to iGPU gaming. What is the performance benchmark for the A107870K? Well, AMD claims that it's faster than the GT740 paired with an i3. So this is the benchmark that I have to beat. So here is the APU based system. You will notice that I focused only on the core components. I did this because the rest of the parts are identical for the two builds so their price is irrelevant. For the motherboard I went with the Gigabyte GA-F2A88XM-D3H Keep in mind that it's one of the less expensive options for the CPU, of course the AMD A107870K and for the RAM I went with 8 gigs of Kingston Savage DDR3-2400 memory. Here is the price breakdown. As you can see the core components cost roughly $250. Remember that number, we are paying $250 for a PC that performs slightly better than an i3 plus a GT740. To be honest it doesn't look good for APU gaming. Let's move on to the discrete GPU solution. For the motherboard I went with the MSI H81M-P33, for the CPU I went with the Pentium G3220, for the RAM I chose 8 gigs of crucial memory and for the GPU I went for the R7370 aka the final nail in the coffin of APU gaming and the overall price of the components is $240. And the performance difference? Well, the discrete GPU system is roughly 50% faster than the iGPU one. We can safely conclude that APU gaming is just not worth it. Now let's answer a few frequently asked questions. Can I go for a cheaper APU so that the system costs less? 
Yes you can, but you will get less performance and if we scale down the discrete GPU system to the same price point, it would still deliver better performance. Can I overclock the system to reduce the performance gap? You can overclock your system, but first you will have to invest in cooling and second you cannot compensate a 50% performance difference by overclocking. What if I'm a casual gamer and I do CPU intensive work on my PC? If you require both CPU power and GPU performance and you don't game that much, then an APU based system may be the exact PC for you. In some cases the CPU in the example discrete GPU system is slower than the APU which means that the APU will perform better in specific CPU intensive tasks. What if I want to build a very compact mini ITX gaming PC? Well this answer is going to be a bit longer. Usually people who build mini ITX gaming builds tend to go for the smallest cases possible like the Cooler Master Mini 110. As you can see the case doesn't have any expansion slots and thus the integrated GPU is your only solution. In cases like these I would recommend that you go for a slightly larger case and go for the discrete GPU option. For example the Silverstone Raven is an awesome solution for mini ITX builds. It's compact, it has tons of features and it fits long GPUs. So let's make a summary of the analysis. First, APUs have a bad price to performance ratio in terms of gaming. For the same price as an APU build you can make a much better performing discrete GPU system. APU PCs are practical if you use them for more CPU intensive tasks. Mini ITX APU gaming builds are pointless, sacrifice some space, get a slightly bigger case and go for the discrete GPU option. And so this concludes my APU gaming performance analysis. As always send in questions, like, comment and subscribe for more tech videos. The order signing out.